Hello and thank you for joining me once again for the latest installment of The Vault. My name is Julie Fry and I'm the curator at Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens. This week we're going to talk about Henrietta Cyberling and the Oxford Group, which was an organization that ultimately led to the introduction of Bill W. and Dr. Bob, who became the two co-founders of Alcoholics Anonymous. Henrietta Cyberling was married to Fred Cyberling, F.A. and Gertrude's oldest son. They were married here at Stan Hewitt Hall in the Music Room in 1917. Fred and Henrietta went on to have three children and spent most of their married life living at the Gate Lodge, which is the small service building at the uh, front entrance of the estate. Unfortunately, Fred and Henrietta did not have a happy relationship. Um, Fred often would spend time up here at the manor house with Henry and the children living full time down at the Gate Lodge. So in January of 1933, a group called the Oxford Group traveled to Akron to basically provide a presentation to the public. The Oxford Group was a spiritual movement founded by a gentleman named Dr. Frank Buckman. He was a Lutheran minister from Pennsylvania. And the idea behind the Oxford Group was that it was a kind of, it was a type of spiritual discipline. It was not supposed to replace your existing religion. You could still be a Catholic, a Presbyterian, a Lutheran, but it was a way to bring people closer to God and on an individual basis. So the idea would be that you as an individual could seek God's divine guidance um, yourself. You did this through personal examination, kind of looking inward, recording your faults, recording areas of improvement, and then asking God for guidance as to how best to address those. You would go to meetings, Oxford group meetings, where you would share these uh, challenges that you were facing or maybe some of your self-examination that you wanted to talk about with the group and then could get feedback from other members. And then also they practiced a form of meditation called quiet time where again, you were maybe asking a question or meditating on something and looking to God to provide you with guidance on that issue. So those were really kind of the basic tenets of the Oxford group. When members came in January of 1933, they created a bit of a sensation here in Akron. The first night when they had speakers lined up, over 1,800 people attempted to get into the Mayflower Hotel ballroom, which only held 1,200 at the time. So they had to create a satellite meeting across the street at Polsky's, which also had an auditorium space that people could go into. So they heard people stand up and talk about how the Oxford group had changed their lives. And one of the speakers was actually a couple from Akron. It was Russell Firestone, who was known as Bud Firestone. He was one of Harvey Firestone's sons and his wife, Dorothy Firestone. And uh, Bud Firestone was a known alcoholic. All around Akron in most social circles knew that he was a drinker. He was someone who could not control his drinking, that he and his wife, Dorothy, also had a very unhappy marriage because of these choices. But Bud had been introduced to the Oxford group by a coworker and had become sober through practicing Oxford group tenants. And this was really a game changer. His father, Harvey, was the one that then invited the Oxford group to come to Akron, feeling that if this movement had so impacted his son, this was something that should be shared out with the Akron community and maybe could change other people's lives as well. And Henrietta, as well as many of the other cyberlings, attended those first nights and listened to those lectures. And she herself, struggling with her unhappy marriage, really found a path for herself and found a place where she could maybe seek reflection in herself. How could she make herself change? And how could she impact possibly her husband and her children for a better life? And unfortunately, Fred was not interested in the Oxford group, but Henrietta also learned that it was a practice of self-discovery. And so very quickly kind of moved away from worrying about Fred's journey and focus mostly on herself. And as she grew stronger in her practice and more focused, thinking about her own spirituality and her own journey, she then started to evolve into what is the most important part of the Oxford Group is that once you learn self-discipline and learn how to affect your own life, you are then to go out and try to affect the lives of others around you and try to be a positive impact. And this is when she met Dr. Bob, also at an Oxford Group meeting, another man who was suffering from alcoholism who could not stop drinking on his own, and Henrietta felt very compelled that she could help him in some way. She didn't know she wasn't a doctor, she had no experience with alcoholism, but she just felt compelled to help Dr. Bob. And then sometime later, a few weeks later, she was introduced to Bill W. 
another alcoholic, and she thought if I could bring these two gentlemen together who are suffering from the same problem, maybe they could help each other. And that's exactly what happened on uh, Mother's Day, May 25th, 1935. Dr. Bob and Bill W. met at the Gate Lodge at her home. They ended up talking for many hours late into the night about their shared experiences as alcoholics. And from that, AA was really born. And what many people don't realize is that Henrietta stayed very active in those early formative years. She was close to Dr. Bob and his wife, Anne. She participated in Oxford group meetings that focused exclusively on alcoholics. That group really started to grow to a point where it broke off from the Oxford group and became what we know uh, as AA today. So if you're interested in learning more about those early years of AA and Henrietta's involvement, um, please come to the Gate Lodge for a self-guided experience. There's an exhibit in there that will tell you all about it, give you more information, and it is open when the estate is open, so please check our website. So thank you for joining me once again for the latest installment of The Vault, and I look forward to sharing more with you again soon.